Hi, my name is Henry Segerman. This is Non-Euclidean Virtual Reality. It's a joint work with by Hart, Andrew Hawksley, and Sibeli Matsumoto. Um, so here I am in this space full of cubes. I'm inside of, there's sort of a black cube around here. Its corners are cut off. There's a blue cube in front of me. You'll notice on the floor here there are um, these squares taped off. So those squares are somehow the same size of the, as the, the cubes that I'm looking at, but there's something different going on here. Well, you can see here there's apparently way too many cubes around this edge here. There should be four, just like there's four squares on the floor here. Well, so let's see. I'm going to go around and see how many cubes there are. So I'm in the black cube. So if I walk forward a little bit, now I'm in the blue cube. So I've gone one. Let's turn around and forward again. Two and three and four. And I'm not back where I started because I was trying to get to the black cube. Five and six. So it actually takes me six turns to go around this. Well, there's actually six uh, cubes around here. We can turn off the edges here. We just got the truncated ends of these cubes. So it looks like that. And now you can really see um, that there's six things around here. I'm going to get up above this thing. So, um, so right, so there's six things fitting around and they should be 90 degrees, but they're not because I'm in hyperbolic space. Um, and also we've got all of these interesting shapes around here. They look like they might be icosahedra or something. Let me see what happens. Um, maybe I can get around the side of this thing to see what shape it is. Um, so I'm going to go around here and, and keep going around. And, um, and it never stops. It just keeps going. Um, and you can never get to the back side of it. Well, so what you could do is you could go inside. Um, through one of these windows and see what's going on. And actually you see, back out here, um, well, you would see except that our tiling depth isn't that big, but it's a, an infinite plane of these triangles with six around each corner. So actually this thing here that looked like it might be an icosahedron is a Euclidean plane. If you're sort of back here, you can see it. Um, so each one of these things in here is a Euclidean plane. Okay, here I am again. Um, this time uh, I don't have those truncated cubes with the corners cut off. I've just got cube cubes. And so it's another sort of strange little thing. Like that vertex of that cube looks like it's sort of nearby and I could get to it. Um, but if I try and see where it is, I never actually get to the other side. Um, if I sort of turn around and look back, here I am deep inside of the corner of this uh, black cube that I started inside of. I can just sort of shift over here. There's a blue cube and a red cube and a magenta cube and a yellow cube. And I can sort of, if I get up again, I climb up out of the depths of the corner and that's, I was living in that, um, <laughs> that vertex of this cube over here. So these, these vertices are actually infinitely far away, it turns out. Now, um, you may notice, if you just sort of wander around in this space, things that were originally perhaps um, you know, horizontal and vertical are all sort of twisted and weird. And, and that's a result of uh, something called parallel transport, which is uh, another effect of it was this, this that I appear to walk around um, six right angles to get back to where I started. So I can fix this just by sort of moving around. So this green square is tilted over to the right and I can untilt it and all I have to do is just sort of move my head around in a circle like this and you will see that the square gradually, there we go, gets straightened out. So now the green, uh, the bottom part of this uh, green square is, let's see, a little bit more. There we go. There it's horizontal. Um, so as you move your head around in circles and walking around the, the square was like this as well, it sort of tilts, it changes the orientation of things. So this is a problem with, for example, um, having a floor. I mean, there's no floor in this world. 
Um, it's just sort of abstract cubes everywhere. But if we wanted to build something with, with a floor that was horizontal, I'd be in trouble, right? So because I can tilt things just by moving my head around in circles. So let me, actually, let me do that now. So this green square is now, it's a little bit down uh, from, from where I am. And let's see if I can get it to, to move it up so that it's more above me. And now I just need to do this a whole bunch. And again, parallel transport is gradually moving it up above me. So now it's up there. So you can see if you had floor um, and you move around for a little bit, suddenly the floor is going to be tilted in some crazy way. So the second uh, non-Euclidean VR thing that we'll come back to uh, in a minute is uh, H2 cross E, um, and that sort of solves this problem whilst introducing other new problems. Anyway, so uh, last thing, it wouldn't be a project of ours if we didn't somehow involve lots of monkeys. So let's switch back to this one and then put the monkeys in. Uh, there we go. So what's going on here? So we are again in this world of these sort of truncated ends of the, the cubes. Um, and each of the cubes now has a monkey inside of it. Um, so you can see, let's see if I go over here. So here's um, between these two uh, not icosahedra in front of me, there would be an edge of the, the cubes, except we've got rid of it so you can see the monkeys. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six monkeys around there. And so there's sort of monkeys everywhere, infinitely many monkeys. This is, um, this is actually a, um, re closely related to our uh, more fun than a hypercube of monkeys um, sculpture. Um, so in that one, you've got a, a monkey in each of the eight cubes of the hypercube. And here, um, well, so in the hypercube, there are three cubes around an edge. And here, there are six cubes around each edge. And so you can somehow unwrap the monkeys in the hypercube into this space. Um, and they all connect together properly. Um, and live their happy monkey lives in this infinite space. All right, so here I am in H2 cross E. So this is an interesting space. We would like to combine some of the notions of hyperbolic space, uh, three-dimensional hyperbolic space we just talked about with uh, the Euclidean plane. So we wanted to solve the problem of the floor falling out from under our feet as we walked. So this space is a product space of um, the Euclidean line. So up and down vertically is Euclidean. So as I look up and I look down, distances appear to be falling off normally. But in the plane here, I've got something else going on. So I'm living in uh, the hyperbolic plane uh, along here. So we've got the same tiling as we had in, um, in H3 in the plane here. So I've got six cubes meeting around each vertex. So I start out in this dark green cube. Um, I move to the left, I have a teal cube. Beyond that, I've got a pale blue cube. Directly across from me is a white cube. Um, as I move further to the right, there is a salmon cube. And then to my immediate right is a red cube. So uh, as we can see, there are six cubes that uh, meet around every, uh, every edge. Uh, every vertical edge. However, what's going on with the horizontal edges is a little bit different. So these are more like Euclidean cubes. So I've got four cubes meeting around each, um, each edge. So I'm in a dark green cube. Across from me is a red cube. Below that is a darker red cube and below me is a, a teal cube. So we've got four cubes meeting around each of these horizontal edges. So we can go inside a vertex and see what's going on. So what we found out in uh, H3 is that each of these are a, um, a Euclidean plane. But what happens when I stick my head inside here? So when I'm inside here, I am living inside a uh, closed uh, polygon. So there are six equilateral triangles above me and six equilateral triangles below me. And at these vertices in front of me, you see that there are four meeting at um, each corner. So as I get up from here, 
Uh, you might notice something else that's a bit interesting. I'm gonna move over into a cube like this. So straight ahead of me, these are normal cubes and they're getting closer and closer and closer and closer together faster than they would if this were Euclidean. So this is an example of uh, how parallax might work in, um, in, in hyperbolic space. So an interesting aspect about this space is that the aspect ratio of these cubes changes. So if I'm looking at, at um, a, a rectangular window, two cubes ahead of me, so let's look at the uh, salmon colored pink one two ahead of me, as I walk forward, the aspect ratio is going to change from something that's very tall and skinny, it's gonna widen and widen and widen. So, so let's see this as I walk forward. So you can see it's widening and widening and widening and widening like this. So here I am back in H2 cross E. So you'll notice I'm staring directly at an edge of one of my cubes. So as with H3, uh, we can use parallel transport in the H2 plane. So if I would like to instead be looking straight at another cube instead of at this edge, I can start moving myself around like this. And as you'll notice, the rest of the world is slowly rotating around with me. Oops, I don't think I'm moving my head enough. So as you can see, I haven't moved my feet, I haven't changed the direction of my head, but now I'm staring directly at a cube in front of me. So this is um, a parallel transport in the H2 direction. However, you'll notice that doing this motion like this is not going to rotate the floor up from under my feet. So this means that um, no matter what I do, the floor will always stay under my feet as I walk around this place. So this was non-Euclidean virtual reality. Thanks for watching.